Uh, and I'm really glad you brought up Tesla because you're uh, you were one of the first Model S customers, I believe, and have been you on the original the first. Roadster, the first Model S customer. So super deeply involved with the company. And uh, fr from my perspective, I have this weird gut feeling that Tesla, you know, I've been following them for 10 years personally. Yeah. As a company, the intrinsic value, the earnings power, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're better than ever. So I just feel like there's never been a, b a bigger disconnect between the reality of what is actually going on at Tesla's yeah. factory and the company versus the perception in the media. Um, and I just was wondering if you had any comments about that or, well, is I mean, there, there like is that? a huge short interest right now. The stock market is very high and there are a number of companies that have been attacked by shorts and the shorts are looking for companies that they perceive to be overvalued. And I would say Tesla has been fully valued where it's valued to perfection. In fact, I think Elon said that, like it's, we're, we're pretty well valued um, at certain points. So when the stock becomes fully valued, let's say, or even if it gets a little hot and people are betting on the future, then some people are gonna take the other side of that bet. And those people, that's fine for people to do that. What happened this time is it's gotten a little bit contentious where um, I think they're spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt with anonymous accounts and like sending drones and planes and people to yeah. look at all the, the Twitter car. FUD is ridiculous. Yeah, and they're all <laughs> just like the Twitter, the Tesla Q, I guess that's, you know, for short, uh, they're out there like saying, well, there's, we found 300 Model 3s in a, you know, a parking garage in, you know, San Jose or wherever they're finding these. And they're like, oh my God, that means these cars aren't selling. And it's like, well, then the other side of that is, well, they're on the way to being sold. Right. They're, yeah. And <laughs> that lot will be empty in a week. And so they're sort of telling half the story. And then Elon didn't do himself any favors by mixing it up with those people. He should not be fighting with the shorts. He's incredibly talented. He's a personal friend. Like he doesn't need to mix it up with a bunch of shorts. Um, he should be talking to the owners of the cars and he should be focused on uh, his team and and the people who love the cars and just ignore the shorts. So and he's doing that now. And that, mean, that's one thing I'm sort of, or I was confused by. I guess is Elon's such a smart guy, and I give him the benefit of the doubt almost sure. all the time. And then I'm wondering, like, does he realize that you know this the media people writing fud, maybe a couple shorts, like they're not really driving the price. Tesla's worth fifty billion. They could raise when they want. Like the market's yeah, giving them the benefit. I think of the it's doubt. probably why just, listen. He's you know? probably just it's probably a lot of stress to be under, and he's probably. You know, if you're getting beat up all the time, at a certain point, you can punch a person 10 times, they might take a swing back. So I don't blame yeah. them. Like, I don't think totally. I would have, I don't know if I would have been as reserved as he has been. I mean, I might, you know, I'm a bit of a brawler, so I would fight back. Um, so, uh, you know, in hindsight, yeah, maybe on the edges, he shouldn't have, you know, been poking them as much or mixing it up with them. Really, the thing about critics is he, nobody remembers the critics. The critics die in obscurity. They don't last the test of time. 